Have you guys ever wanted to play PC VR directly from inside your pocket? Well, I for sure know I have. It's why if you've been with the channel for a while now, you know we have so many different projects attempting to get this done, including installing Windows on an Android phone and Android tablet. And that went just about as well as you can imagine. It wasn't really the most playable thing on the planet. Well, nowadays we have devices like the Steam Deck that should enable us to do this a whole lot better. What is up everyone? I'm Mystical. And today we're going to be playing PC VR on a handheld device that quite literally fits inside your pocket. Now these aren't the uh, the largest pockets and, and the, the trigger keeps getting stuck. This is actually the ROG Ally, not a Steam Deck. It's quite a bit more powerful and has a 1080p display as well as having RGB. But the most important part, it comes with Windows pre-installed, which if a lot of you wanted to do this yourself, I would imagine that those that aren't techie wouldn't entirely want to go around installing Windows onto their handheld devices. You get the point. You could totally have this thing in your pocket, just make sure the cooling fan's sticking out a little bit, jump into virtual reality and play VR wherever you are. Show the beautiful scenery, Adisha. Show, show this. Look where we are. We are, we are in the winter wonderland right now. I'm not saying I recommend playing PC VR outside. As a matter of fact, I don't necessarily recommend bringing your VR headset outside unless you know how to keep it safe from the deadly laser that is the sun. But yeah, with that being said, let's jump right into the video. Before we continue with the gameplay, I feel like we need to establish where exactly this device lies when it comes to gaming. Well, if you ask me, it's somewhere between your Intel HD graphics in a standard laptop and a gaming laptop. However, it is going to be much more powerful than that Intel HD graphics and certainly much more powerful than a phone or tablet. This, as we established earlier, is the ROG Ally. It's a mobile handheld that was made to compete with the Steam Deck. And just to give you a few specifications for those that are interested, it's running the AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme processor. It's got eight cores, 16 threads, 24 megabytes of total total cache, and it has an up to 5.10 gigahertz boost. For its GPU, it's running the AMD RDNA 3, which has 12 CUs, goes up to 2.7 gigahertz, and has up to 8.6 teraflops. Its TDP is 9 to 30 watts, which is certainly going to help it here when compared to devices such as the Steam Deck. However, it can only reach that 30 watt power rating on a power adapter. The display won't be that important here, but we're going to talk about it anyway for those that are interested. It's a 7 inch 1920 by 1080 p display that runs up to 120 hertz and has a 500 nit peak brightness. However, what I feel like we should be interested in here is the RAM. Of course, the more RAM, the more PC VR games you're going to be able to run, and the nicer they're going to run for you. And the ROG Ally should certainly be able to do this here, as it has a whole 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM, and now that we have all of that out of the way, and you know what device we're working with, hopefully that will help you when comparing to other handhelds on the market. You'll know whether you're looking at something that is higher or something that is lower. With that being said, let's check out how well this thing can truly play VR. Okay, so here's the setup for our PC VR gaming session. First of all, we're using virtual desktop in order to connect to the Ally wirelessly. We're not using AirLink, we're not using Link, and we're not using Steam Link. And the reason we're actually not using Steam Link is because we tried it and we got better results using virtual desktop. We're connected to a five gigahertz access point that should give us the best possible results when using wireless connectivity. So with that being said, let's jump into our first game, which will be Boneworks. Now, this is Boneworks running at a low quality set in virtual desktop, the target frame rate set to 72 and 186% multiplier set in the resolution settings of Steam VR. You may be asking yourself, why the 186% multiplier? Well, that's pretty simple. We actually just forgot to turn it off. So this may have been a fluke, but it was called perfectly playable by Eddie and he did go ahead and play through it. This did run quite low though, at somewhere around 60 FPS throughout the gameplay. So we decided to try again. Here is Boneworks running on the Ally with resolution per eye set to 100%. No resolution scaling, the low setting in virtual desktop and the target frame rate set to 90. As you can tell, the game actually did pretty well. Keep in mind, this is a PC VR game running on what I would still call 
technically mobile hardware. It's hovering somewhere around the 80 FPS mark, which a lot of you might call unacceptable or unplayable, but if you ask me, the first quest ran at 72 FPS. So this is still better than we would get on something like a Quest 1. So I give this one a solid pass. And if you wanted to get more frames, you could always switch to potato level quality or bring down the resolution scaling inside SteamVR settings. So you do have options in order to bring this up even higher. I thought this was an okay balance between okay frame rate and okay quality. Now, let's move on to something a little bit more powerful. No Man's Sky. Yes, this thing actually launched on the Ally. And I mean, I should have expected it to, but to be fair, after trying to launch this on an Android tablet and it not working, I didn't have incredibly high hopes. It did crash the first time when we had the quality set to low inside virtual desktop. So we retried again, but this time with potato level quality. So this is No Man's Sky running at 90 FPS target frame rate and potato level quality inside the Ally, inside virtual desktop. There is no resolution scaling or no resolution multiplier set and the game doesn't look the prettiest. It is still a PC VR game and it does still give you access to No Man's Sky. There is a bit of game latency here that I noticed myself when I jumped into the game, however this could be further reduced by reducing the render resolution. Overall though, I would say this is pretty decent for mobile hardware once again and it does give you access to a PC VR title that you would otherwise not be able to play on Quest standalone. Now we have The Forest, one of my personal favorites. For this one, we went back to the low quality inside virtual desktop. However, we did have to reduce the resolution scaling here to about 26%. Yes, this does make the game look pretty bad, but it is playable. And if you ask me, this is a fairly demanding game to play on anything. Oh, and we did also have to reduce the quality of the game inside the game settings to its very lowest. So again, not ideal, but at least it worked. And this is with the low quality set in virtual desktop. If we had set potato level quality, this probably would have ran better, but we wanted to see how far we could get with this. With the settings that we applied, the game, once again, did look pretty bad, but did run at around 80 to 90 FPS once again. And you can distinguish between things in the game. So some people might call this playable and acceptable, while others might not want to touch it. I feel like fine tuning the settings here could give you even better results. Point being, the game does actually run, and once again gives you access to a PC VR title that you otherwise would not have access to if you were just playing standalone. After this, we decided to try some other titles, titles that I feel like would be a lot less demanding. For example, VRChat. Yes, we actually jumped into VRChat on the ROG Ally to see how well VRChat PC VR graphics would fare on a device like this. One of people's biggest gripes with VRChat right now is that you can't see PC VR avatars on your Quest standalone. Of course, you sort of can now with imposters, but I wanted to see how much better that would get on the Ally. And I must say, it actually ran pretty all right. Joining worlds and playing with other players, this wasn't an issue. And I'm sure that if we ran more demanding avatars or joined worlds with even more people, this would start becoming a problem. However, within our testing, we actually didn't find it drop that far. We also gave Stride a go. And yes, I know Stride is a game that you can play on the quest, but once again, we wanted to try some less demanding titles. And Stride ran very, very well. This is low quality, set in virtual desktop, and the target frame rate set to 90. No resolution multiplier or anything set inside Steam VR. Game ran pretty well, 80 to 90 FPS. So there you guys have it. Can you play PC VR games on mobile hardware? I'm happy to say, yes you can. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that I'm telling you to go out and buy a handheld gaming device in order to play VR. No, this was just a concept for us in order to see whether something like this could play VR. Could we potentially start seeing these on the back of headsets in the near future? As you saw in today's video, the latency here was pretty bad. While some might play this quite happily, others could get motion sick from it. This could be to do with a number of things, and could certainly be reduced by reducing the graphics even further, but that's a compromise many aren't willing to go for, or even using wired link. 
The question is, would the Oculus software even allow that to happen? Since I know it's been quite picky with graphics cards in the past. This is not something we managed to try in today's video. But these gaming handhelds keep getting better and better. The Steam Deck just recently got an upgrade, and more and more devices are constantly coming out. I feel like in 2024, we're gonna see quite a few more of these come out onto the market that are hopefully even more powerful. We're getting to the point where we can genuinely have PC VR on a standalone headset in the near future, with perhaps just like a little box strapped onto the back of the headset. Let's remember, a lot of these devices, the biggest part of them is actually the screen and the battery. But without that screen, I'm sure you could reduce the size of the battery and actually put it on the back of the headset like something like the Quest Pro. The Quest Pro has a battery back there and that has really good weight distribution. So if we had like a little computer in the back being able to play PC VR games, even if it wasn't the best at the beginning, even if you had to reduce that quality quite a bit, I feel like a lot of people would be very, very happy. And it does look like we're at that point. So TLDR, yeah, you can play PC VR on mobile hardware. The question is, should you? I'll leave that one up to you. Either way though, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day or night, wherever you are. And if you guys liked it, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess it's works too, but let me know why down below. If you guys are not yet part of the community, check out our Discord and our Reddit down below where I wanna see you posting your spicy memes. And thank you so, so much to all the amazing Patreons supporting this channel. You guys are incredible. Thank you so much for all your support, seriously much love. And thank you to anyone else supporting the channel in any way, shape, or form. As usual, if you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack the subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.